to try and rock the ship too fast, too soon and too quick, it's going to fall apart. Hi everyone, we have with us Mr. Hiren Gandhi. He is director of the Hotel Express Towers and it is a very well known landmark in our city. And he is also founder of Urban Pod, a very interesting and unique concept that we'll talk about. So hi, welcome to the show today. Uh, so first of all, I'm very curious, lockdown just ended. So how did you spend your time in lockdown? What all did you do? What all realizations you had? Thank you for inviting me today. Uh, so obviously lockdown has uh, brought some new realities in all our lives. Uh, and for me, obviously, initially it was, uh, I was a bit lost. Okay, what is this? I'm not used to, you know, otherwise you're used to getting up with your routine, going to work, uh, coming back, spending time with your family and calling it a day. This was very unusual where we were staying home for hours and hours and after a while you didn't know what to do. Uh, besides all the entertainment, spending time with family, I realized that this was the time that I could nurture some additional skills that I was wanting to fo uh, follow up on. Mm -hmm. So I did some online uh, classes on uh, Microsoft Excel. Uh -huh. you know, personally, I thought uh, I didn't have the required uh, skills or the confidence that was required. Uh, I used to do the usual stuff, but I wanted to go beyond uh, mm -hmm. the usual uh, Excel uh, operations which uh, I, I did and I'm still doing because yeah. those classes are for almost 150 hours and I'm not still finished it. Okay. So it's also getting used to it, practicing it. So this is one of the things and other things we did was gardening with the family and you know trying trying new new recipes at home. My wife was cooking so we were in the laboratory and I was one of the experiments on which my wife was experimenting with food <laughs> and that's why it shows on me now. <laughs> Interesting. So, in, even in under so like how many people, uh, how big is the team of Express Hotel and the startup that you are running? So, uh, hotels, uh, we have two hotels in Baroda, one is Express Towers and Express Residency. Yeah. Uh, between the two hotels, we have almost 250 people mm -hmm. and uh, we have another property in Jamnagar, we have about, where we have about 100, 110 people uh -huh. on any given day. Um, and my team in uh, Mumbai, which is Urban Board, is only about 15 people uh, okay. because that hotel is uh, very, very different and we can talk about it as we go along. So, so now I'm very curious that a person who has 300 to 350 people working at his leadership, he can easily hire someone who knows very good Excel, who has done a course. Then why did you choose to do it? So, uh, yes, uh, we have people in our team uh -huh. who are uh, doing advanced uh, operations in Excel. But I think sometimes uh, doing things on your own helps uh, build confidence in yourself. Plus, uh, when you do something quick, at, uh, you know, when you're doing it on your own, something very small, mm -hmm. uh, it gives you the relevant insight uh, into a project. So. Uh, Excel, I feel, is a very, very good tool to uh, use it in your day-to-day -day business mm -hmm. operations. Uh, we don't want to do advanced uh, you know, programming, but if you want regular insights in your current operations or business, it's a great tool to work with. Mm -hmm. That is very amazing. So now, there is a small thing I want to share. Our office is just behind the Hotel Express Towers. And every time when, you know, someone is visiting me for the first time, I, you know, I tell him, okay, reach Hotel Express, Towers, I'll guide you. So, on an average, on daily basis, I almost tell 10 people about Hotel Express Tower. Okay, Hotel Express Tower, I'll guide you. So, now, there are a lot of buildings around Express Hotel. But my question is, what makes, what all things, if we do, if that you and your team have done that separates a landmark from a normal building. So why do I take name of Express Hotel every time and why not another building? Good, I think remind me to start charging your premium after we finish this. <laughs> uh, so uh, 
I think uh, anything, uh, any landmark uh, takes years of perseverance uh, to reach where we are. Uh, take for that matter any large uh, organization, whether it's a factory, you know, today GSF in Baroda is a as a certain stature, or you call a Taj Mahal Hotel in Mumbai is a certain stature. So those buildings or those institutions have reached a certain uh, uh, level in society or in the business world because of their product, because of the way they have delivered uh, the product or services, uh, and they have become a household name, and that is how they have become a you know a landmark. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to Express, uh, we have been here for more than forty years. Uh, we have seen a lot of buildings come and go. Uh, around us, uh, and obviously, Barodians have uh, some kind of a, uh, a relationship with us. Whether it's 24 carats as a restaurant, or a lot of honeymooners you spend the first night in one of our hotel rooms, uh, or anything else related to weddings in the banquets that we have. So people have a connection, a heart-to-heart -heart connection, and I think that's what makes a brand or a uh, you know, or a landmark, as you said, uh, and I, I think uh, more than the building, it's it's the brand connection that we have with uh, people like you who use it as a landmark uh, to you know to get anywhere. So now I should start having premium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, as you said this, it reminds me of an incident when I was in my early early college days. So I used to sit with my college friends at a, you know, Chai Ki Kitli. So we used to have tea over there and talk a lot, chat uh, for a lot of hours. So uh, one of my friends, his father was a little, you know, disappointed by this idea of, you know, meeting friends at a tea post and then, you know, gossiping for hours. So I remember once his father said in sarcasm, that you have so now this small incident is saying a lot of things, you know, is sharing what people, what perception people have for this brand. So what, so what is the kind of niche audience that we are looking for in this business and how is people's response at our brand? Uh, good question. So I think uh, we are uh, catering to a, a unmet need of the of an individual at different stages of life. So when you when you start progressing, when you were a student, probably your target was to have fun in the evening, meeting friends and having chai. Uh, but as you progress in your life, uh, you know you want to get associated with something better as you go along the path. True. Uh, so, you know, for example, you would have started with a cycle or a, or, a, yeah. or, a, or a two wheeler in your college days and now you probably drive a car or even a premium car or something you desire in a few years to be in an even more premium car. So that's the, I think that's that's called progression in life. And so we cater to a, a, a lifestyle of people who want to get associated with Express because they want to get noticed or they want to give a statement to their friends or family or, or business yes. associates uh, that okay this is where I have tea as you said as an example uh, not necessarily an ego product because I don't think we are that premium mm -hmm. as on today but we definitely cater to the basic need which is you know meeting the need of a certain niche requirement uh, for example we have created a, a sofa setting in our uh, in our coffee shop so there is a lot of niche uh, uh, crowd that wants little more coziness than a usual restaurant atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So we were the first ones to do a lounge kind of thing more than 10 years back, mm -hmm. which was still new to the city. So products like this kind of, you know, uh, raises the bar when it comes to an individual uh, accepting a brand. So you want to go to a brand which is always ahead of its time. And I think that's what we have believed in and that is how we've been bringing the best possible products and services to the city. Amazing. So that's uh, that's the niche that you call is, is addressed here. Uh -huh. That is interesting. So now uh, the Express Hotel Towers is a family business, a family driven business. 
So, what is the difference between a family driven business and a normal commercial business? Is there any significant difference? Does it work in a different way or what is your thought on this? So, uh, uh, I personally feel that uh, family businesses r- come with a certain set of values mm-hmm. which is uh, different than a, than a typical professionally run business, uh, say for example, a company which is responsible only to its investors or shareholders, which we see a lot these days. True. You see all these PE funds and large businesses being set up. They are not necessarily emotionally involved from day one uh, and they don't necessarily dictate the values. But here in family business, maybe something your grandparents or maybe earlier than that set certain values in the family kind of flow into the business, uh, which is something which is very unique to family business. Uh, example could be uh, that I will never give bribe to get my business done. Could be a family value which is there and which kind of flows into the uh, into your business day to day activity. So those are the kind of things that make a family business different from a professionally run business. And plus, uh, I think uh, when it comes to family business, we always want to shoulder our responsibility from our father or uncle or cousin or brother or whatever. We don't want to do something that, okay, this is what I want and this is what I will try and do it, which is what you see in professionally run businesses. Here it is a family first and because family is also the shareholders and also you want to make sure that family is safe first in whatever decisions you take. You don't take something, you know, single-handed decision. It's always more of a, a group decision Uh, within the family business so that uh, you can shoulder the responsibility and that is why you never have hard-coded targets in mind okay this is what I will want to achieve it's good to have targets but it's not something which is going to make you lose your job which is what we see in professionally run businesses so it has its pros and cons but if this uh, the business gets a good balance uh, between uh, individual, family, and the business. So there is always a good life balance maintained mm-hmm. uh, in a family business. That's my uh, view on this. Mm-hmm. So, so you you talked about values. So, how important are values for any business? So, like, a lot of people find you know different ways wherein you know legally they are right, but then there is something unethical within. So, what do you think is the significance and the importance of value in any business, a business driven by value? So, ethics are very different than values. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, you have your ethics in place, uh, but values are certain things which are not written on a piece of paper. It is there which you are carrying in your, from generation to generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, an example I can give in a restaurant or a, a food and beverage industry is that, okay, we want some non veg in our in our restaurant or in our hotel, Mm -hmm. Uh, that could be a value which is not mentioned legally anywhere. Legally, you're allowed to serve or ethically, it's okay to serve. Mm -hmm. But certain family business uh, values that are there, they are imbibed in you and that is what you value the most. That is why you'll never probably cross over or change that unless uh, something drastically changes. So, uh, those are the kind of values that kind of dictate uh, the family business more than what what is right and wrong or what is legal or illegal to do. Okay. Uh, the, when I say values, that's what I meant. Uh, okay. you know, that, that is what is different than ethic and unethical. Okay, understood. And so, while you are also leading a well-established business, along with that, you also founded, you know, your own uh, venture. So, uh, what was easier and what was tough? Was it tough to start your own uh, startup, urban pod or taking the leadership of this well-established business? What was more challenging? So, uh, everything comes with its own set of uh, challenges. Nothing is on a platter. I mean, when you get into family business, getting used to the, the work environment, get, making a, putting a foot in the door itself is a challenge. You are younger, you have a lot more energy and you want to put put in your ideas and then there are a lot of roadblocks so finding your way into a family business has its own uh, challenges mm-hmm. uh, but setting up a new business uh, you can start something from scratch mm-hmm. because there is no there is no uh, 
precedence or there is nothing set in stone you are supposed to set the uh, the stone rolling so that's why it becomes a challenge by itself mm -hmm. uh, but yes the experience for me personally in the family business helped in creating this product uh, creating the organization that we ended up starting uh so i i would say they both come with own their own set of challenges uh but uh, urban pod has its own uh, pros and cons uh, it was a, it has been a extremely enriching uh, journey so far mm -hmm. and uh, i don't see that as a as a impossible thing to do or you know i'm sure as we go along we'll find bigger milestones to achieve Uh, the way the family business is has its own uh, path to follow, but here obviously I'd like to appreciate that my family has been very supportive of starting up this uh, on my own with with a, a group of uh, other people. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of families have challenges on mm -hmm. raising the capital and you know and giving the time required. And obviously here the family was invested in this product, so it was not necessarily just my own venture. It was a family putting in the money into this product uh, so that is a, a plus point that i had uh, that i had the family on my back so a lot of people lot of entrepreneurs who are taking over their family businesses uh, find it very challenging you know fitting in a pre established business meeting to its level you know any piece of advice that you would like to give to the entrepreneurs who are you know just about to take over their family businesses or to the people who are you know entrepreneurs who are going to delegate their task to their children you know upcoming generations any piece of advice you would like to share with them so it's a it's a it's a great uh, challenge for both mm -hmm. for the generation that is stepping down and the one that is taking over uh first of all i think uh, as a younger generation uh, i still consider myself younger generation mm -hmm. uh, when we are taking over uh, one is we have to respect what is being handed over as a legacy uh, of your father or grandfather or whoever it is because they probably have nurtured uh, their uh, that product or that company with a lot of heart lot of bloodshed or a lot of sweat that has gone in bringing up that organization uh, so i think one is the respect part which which is set aside and the other is uh, uh, there is a lot of perseverance which is which is there and which is continuing even in you mm -hmm. that you have to be you know you have to stick to what you are doing and doing it right every day and making it better but if you try and rock the ship too fast too soon and too quick it's going to fall apart so Uh, I think taking baby steps as you go along, learning your way. As I said, knowing the culture and the value system of the business in the first few years is most relevant. Uh, and then, obviously, you get into uh, uh, the changes that you realize you want want to bring in. Yeah, you have to keep yourself, uh, keep giving yourself as a macro view into the business also, so that you can see the business not being in the business, but even stepping a step away and. looking at it trying to add value that okay if i were starting up a new business this business new what different would i do that's when you try and bring in changes and i think uh, initially gradual changes help versus bringing something too drastic because if you fail if the business fails you are responsible not only to yourself but also to the families of your employees and other stakeholders who are involved in the family business so i think there is a lot of responsibility that comes with it and there is a lot of uh, uh, name fame and uh, your own uh, uh, employees and other stakeholders at stake so i think you have to keep that in your mind before you rock the ship as i said mm -hmm. that is interesting so while someone joins the legacy or the family business first thing they should do is try to understand the value set how things are working and then they start taking the uh, that's right yeah that is very insightful so now uh, coming to a very interesting topic what is urban pod if you can share the idea with our audience and how did this idea come to you so uh, urban pod uh, is about a 3 in over a 3 and a half year old product uh, it was uh, initiated by my friend uh, shalab mithal who those years used to stay in singapore 
this is back in 2014 when uh, uh, in Singapore there are a lot of tourists who come on low budgets. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, people who you know you see a lot of these travel guides and you know people who use those travel guides to actually walk their way around the city and 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 uh, you know stay on a very uh, small budget. So uh, those days, these were called capsule hotels mm-hmm. in uh, Singapore, and they were very popular in Japan and uh, other East Asian cities uh, as capsule hotels. Okay. Uh, but this was called a pod hotel in Singapore, and okay. uh, he he knew one of the designers who had designed this and was running the hotel himself in uh, Singapore. And uh, so he invited me that why don't you come here and let's see this product and. Uh, let's try and bring this to India. So uh, I visited. I I saw the product. I met the designer who was involved in the startup in Singapore. Uh, so it sounded like a very interesting product, and uh, that's how we said, okay, this. So when we compared the dollar rates of hotels in Singapore and Mumbai, or even Delhi uh, at some point of time, they were very similar. That okay, your premium hotels cost between hundred hundred and fifty dollars, and the super premium cost three hundred dollars or more, like the Lilas and the Taj and the Oberoi's. So we said, okay, this product works where people value low cost, but at the same time they want very high quality in terms of cleanliness, but they don't necessarily need all the jing bang that goes with a typical five star hotel. They don't need fancy lobbies. They don't need a choice of restaurants. They don't want somebody to, you know, keep taking their luggage everywhere. They want something they can walk in, sleep, maybe grab breakfast and check out. You know, something very quick and easy. So that's when we came up with Urban Pod. Uh, it was a it was a one and a half year journey to even find the location because uh, mm-hmm. Bombay uh, is is a tough place to first is to start a hotel. There are so many legal compliances. Mm-hmm. Uh, and secondly, to get a product which will be allowed in a in a in a commercial building. So, just to give you a brief on the product, we have nine and a half thousand square feet, mm-hmm. and uh, we have one hundred and forty pods. So, typically around one hundred and forty to one hundred and fifty people can actually stay in the if it's completely occupied in only nine and a half thousand square feet, mm-hmm. which is unheard of in a place like Mumbai. Uh, and we charge on an average around thousand in peak season, maybe fourteen hundred a night, uh, which again is unheard of in Bombay because you don't get anything less than six seven thousand rupees for a four star uh, or a higher hotel. So this works great for somebody who's you know on a short visit, maybe a night or two, and is not going to spend much time in the hotel. Maybe just going there to sleep and. Maybe grab breakfast and get going. It's perfect for those kind of uh, people. Amazing, very fascinating and interesting concept. Uh, so now, uh, moving to the end, any one piece of advice that you would like to give to our viewers? Any suggestion? Any recommendation that they should you know do in their lives as an entrepreneur? I am too young to give advice. I am also learning each day as I go along. Uh, but I think uh, some of the things that I picked up is is uh, sticking to your guns, doing the same thing better every day. Uh, try and just improvise uh, the, the what they call is marginal uh, in, increase in productivity or quality or whatever you are doing is what we all strive for. And I think uh, that's what makes you a better person and a better product or a better company ultimately. Uh, and I think that uh, trickles down in your organization if you, you know, if you if you work towards that. Try and make sure that you are only doing something better than what you did something yesterday. Uh, I, I, you call it advice or you call it a learning. Uh, yeah. This is what I have learned uh, that we only try and make something better. Uh, I think that's the only way forward, and that's when new ideas will come in, new ways of doing things will come in, uh, because as we say, change is constant. Mm. Uh, something if you are not changing, somebody else will make you ch- make to change you. Mm. So uh, it's better to be ahead of the game by you adapting to the change around you. Mm-hmm. 
amazing and and yeah so the, the one very last fascinating thing that your birthday and the launch of hotel uh, are both same so like is it a coincidence or i have to ask my father i think whether okay. he planned it that way to <laughs> cut the ribbon of the day, on the day of my birth or was it just coincidence i am not sure but i know we have a uh, so we have something called a registration card when you register at the uh-huh. at the hotel uh, so the first customer who walked in the date of his check in was same as the day i was born so i i don't know whether it is a coincidence <laughs> or whether it uh, it was planned by my father but uh, it's definitely a, a great coincidence amazing so this this talk was very insightful i i also learned a lot of things one thing that i learned from this is no matter you know if you can hire someone with you know significant skills it no one can replace the skill set that you have like you know you decided to learn excel in this lockdown while well, you can hire anyone who does that so that was very uh, fascinating for me to know and for i'm sure for all people so yeah this brings to the end of this talk i hope you enjoyed do like share comment and subscribe and share it with someone who really needs to see this thank you so much for coming today thank you for inviting me yeah all right, all right. thank you